Brittonsley Central. In Eccles, Lewis Carter-Jones, 19 years in Parliament, signing on for another five. His majority, though, down 4,000 to 6,000, and a swing to the Conservatives of 3.2% in Eccles. In Manchester Central, Bob Litherland is home for Labour, his majority down 2,000 to 18,000, and a swing to the Conservatives of 4.1%. In Oldham West, Michael Meacher is safely back, he's a Tony Benn aide, and his majority is down uh, to 3,000, a swing to the Conservatives margin, very, very minor, 0.3%. And then in Tyne Bridge, Harry Cowans, uh, who was the MP for Newcastle Central, he's home there. His majority is down 6,000 to 12,000, low turnout 62%, and a swing to the Conservatives of 7.8%. And uh, we can look very quickly at just one result, that the uh, Conservatives have held Broxburn, Mrs. Marion Rowe, who fought Barking in 1979. Uh, she's won, but her majority is down 4,000 to 17,000, and the Liberals up in second place, a swing their way of 3.7%. Martin, we have news of a number of recounts coming on now. At Hindburn, that's the old African seat, there is a recount ordered by the returning officer. There's a recount at Carlisle, which, if my memory serves me right, the Conservatives haven't held since 1959. So that means something may be moving there. And a recount in West Bromwich East at the Conservative request. Down in Devonport, Plymouth Devonport, Dr. Owen is there, looking just a little bit stern. We understand unofficially that Mrs. Shirley Williams may be back in Crosby. We're going now to Slough for a result at Slough. Joe Lester seat. <coughs> Well, here at Slough, where Labour's Joan Lester is defending a slender 1300 majority, the Mayor of Slough, Councillor John Merrills, is getting ready to read out the result. The candidates are coming onto the platform. Uh, Miss Lester is the last onto the platform. She's been MP for Slough for the last 16 years, a former minister, a former chairperson of the Labour Party. She's under considerable pressure, but here is the Mayor, I think, going to read the result. Uh, Can right we now. have silence, please? Thank you. I, the returning officer for the Slough Borough constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given to each candidate at the election was as follows. Nicholas uh, Bokenquet, 9,519. Ian Findle, Ecology Party, three hundred and twenty five. <laughs> Graham John, National Front, five hundred and twenty eight. Joan Lester, Labour, eighteen thousand nine hundred. And 58. John Watt. Conservative. Twenty two thousand. So Joan Lester loses her seat here at Slough after eighteen years as the MP. Conservative gain here at Slough. Joan Lester, majority of 3,000 of the Conservative on a 71% turnout, a swing of 5.5% to the Conservative. Can we have silence for two seconds? Uh, obviously, always on the cards, this result. 22,064. 22, well, that's the first big Labour name to go tonight. Joan Lester at Slough. And this, uh, this is what happened, if I can just summon up the share of the poll at Slough. 
There we are. The Conservative took 43%, Labour took 37%, the SDP 19% and others 2%. The change in the share of the vote compared with the general election of 1979, Conservative up 2.4%, Labour down 8.7% and the SDP up 6.6%. So it looks at first sight as if they cost Labour that marginal. Others down 0.3%. And uh, the state of the parties, you take a look at the state of the parties and go straight to Walthamstow. And Mayor Barham is just consulting the candidates before telling them the result and confirming it to them before announcing the result here at Walthamstow. In that huge concrete Walthamstow Town Hall, which is an enormous monument to the 1930s. Just very quickly, while we're waiting for that result, two important results have come through. As you saw, Swindon, the Conservatives have taken that. That's the first time they've held that since a by-election back in the 1960s. They've also retaken Keithley, Bob Cryer, on the left wing of the Labour Party, has been defeated there, chiefly, I think, by, uh, uh, by boundary changes as well as the swing. And Darlington, as you see now, that's the seat that Labour held in the by-election. Well, now the Conservatives have come back and taken that one. I'll say O'Brien is out. So these are movements now in the north of England which are going the conservative way. And that does seem now to be justifying our prediction of a conservative majority of 114. Waltham so now. Mayor Barham prepares to announce the result at Walthamstow, where there were five candidates, and where the sitting Labour MP, Eric Deakins, has been the MP for 15 Parliamentary years. Parliamentary election, Walthamstow constituency. The votes cast at this election are as follows. We now go straight Amos over to... Alan Thomas. 11,936. <laughs> 1, 1, 9, 3, 6. Deakins, Eric, Petro. 13,000. <laughs> 13,241. 1, 3, Two, four, one. Lambert Stephen William. Ecology. Four hundred and twenty-four. Four, two, four. Leighton Peter Alliance. Leonard. Alliance. Seven thousand one hundred and ninety-two. <laughs> And we'll go straight from Walthamstow to Plymouth. It looks as though Eric Deakin has retained his seat here. Well, here in Mitchell, the Lord Mayor, Councillor Derek Mitchell, has just risen onto the platform and he's about to make his declaration. All the candidates, six of them, are up on the platform with him and he's going to announce the results in just one moment. All right, okay. I, well, as you've heard, the undersigned as returning officer, for the Plymouth Devonport constituency hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Robert Edward David Beresford Walker, British 72. Nation. Faith Hill, 51. David Anthony Llewellyn Owen, SDP, 20,843. Julian Gordon Priestley, Labour, 9,845. James Edward Sullivan, Independent, 292. Anne Noreen Widdicombe, Conservative. 15,907. 
Well, there it is, a massive majority for Dr. Dr. Rowe. And that the undermentioned person has been duly elected to serve as member for the said constituency, David Anthony Llewellyn Owen. Well, Dr. Owen looking very pleased as well he might, because his, even his agent this morning was predicting only a thousand majority. He's got 20,000 majority, Conservatives 15,000. My Lord Mayor, on behalf of us all, I would like to thank you, the returning officers and the staff who manned the polling stations, those who did the count tonight, and the police for the conduct of the election, which has lived up to all the traditions of impartiality which we're well used to here in the city. I would like to say to the other candidates that my thanks for a fairly and freely conducted election. To the uh, party workers of the new Social Democratic Party, I must give a special word of thanks. To our Liberal partners for all their help here in this constituency, again, I must say a very big thank you. To those people watching this result outside in the country, I hope this will be a sign of a major new political force. To those in the Social Democratic Party, we have retained our individual identity. We have uh, established a Social Democratic tradition. We have laid down roots for the future, and they will blossom and grow, and this tree will grow until eventually we become, with our liberal partners, the government of this country. I would say to everyone who has made this possible. Here in the city of Plymouth, which I was born, a big thank you for vindicating my faith in democracy and for showing that it is worth holding to your principles and fighting for what you believe in. It is a most remarkable result that a man should come from the skeleton of a party and depend upon his personal influence and his performance in Parliament and in the country. And Dr. Owen was saying to me just a week or so ago that he hadn't been able to be in Plymouth as much as he had wanted because he had had to help in the national campaign. That is a remarkable result. And we've also just heard that Roy Jenkins has held his seat in Hill Head. As we've been saying before, there's a good chance now that Mrs. Shirley Williams will hold her seat so that the only member of the gang of four who appears to have fallen is Mr. William Rogers in Stockton. Now, at Labour Party headquarters, we have the General Secretary, Mr. Jim Mortimer, to comment on these results. Ian Ross is with him. No, no, don't mind at all. Well, with me in the Labour Party headquarters is Jim Mortimer, the General Secretary of the Labour Party, who's been taking a keen interest in the nation decides and the results sequence in ITN. In particular, one result, Joan Lester's defeat at Slough. Why did that particularly disturb you? Because I think Joan Lester is, uh, has been an excellent member of Parliament, and uh, I was very sorry indeed to see her lose her seat. Very sorry. Do you accept, Mr Mortimer, that Labour has suffered a very substantial defeat? I accept that the results are not as good as we had hoped, uh, but I think there are some other factors which ought to be underlined. First, that the majority of citizens have voted against Mrs. Thatcher. That's very important. Uh, the Conservatives may win the majority of seats, but they have not won by uh, a fair margin a majority of the votes. And that is important. It is not a Conservative landslide. The second thing is that Labour will certainly emerge overwhelmingly as the main opposition party. The next point is that although we have suffered some setbacks, I was very sorry about Slough, very sorry about Bob Cryer and Ozzie O'Brien in Darlington, nevertheless, Labour has held its position in the industrial heartlands of Britain. We are the party of industrial working people. They have retained their support for Labour, and that's very important to us. 
Will this defeat of Labour, if that's what it is, have repercussions in the party, on the leadership, and on the manifesto? First, on the manifesto. We have conducted a very vigorous campaign on the uh, manifesto, le led by the... Carry on some more. Right? Led by the leader, who has done it very, very well indeed, and uh, I think our party will show in the months ahead that our belief in the manifesto was right. Britain will suffer under a new Conservative government. Mr Mortimer, thank you very much. Now back to the studio. Uh, just to say very briefly, we told you there was a recount at Great Grimsby. Austin Mitchell for Labour has held the seat by just 731. Now I believe that at Slough, Giles Smith is talking to Joan Lester. Joan Lester, many con commiserations. Uh, well, how do you feel? Are you recording? Yes, Slough. How do I feel? Well, naturally, I'm disappointed. Um, I hoped we would do it. We fought a magnificent campaign here, but I'm afraid it was the national swing, and then you can't fight that. It what was, was the hard. main element, do you think, that went against you? Well, I think it was the SDP, obviously, took votes from us, but our vote did not fall um, that dramatically. I, I haven't quite worked it out, but I think it fell by less than 2,000. So, by and large, it wasn't a bad result. On a personal level, an MP for 17 years, what do you do now? I have the faintest idea. I never make rash decisions. I shall wait and see. What, what do you feel about the Labour Party? in the way the Labour Party handled this whole election. It's a, going down to something like a quarter of the vote, and this has clearly been a very bad election for Labour. What should the Labour Party be doing now? Well, I'll tell you something. I wouldn't stand here at a time like this for the Labour Party and start to attack it or pull it to pieces. Neither will I leave the Labour Party, as other people have done who've suffered defeats. I shall stay in the Labour Party, I shall fight with the Labour Party for what I believe, and we will come back again. And in this seat, in 38 years, only for 18 months have the Conservatives held it, and I think that's a very good omen for the future. But the Labour Party has got to change direction in some way. Should it change direction to the right or the left, in your, your view? I don't tonight wish to discuss what the Labour Party has or has not to do. We fought a very good campaign, and uh, we have to look at that, and we have to build on the enthusiasm and the devotion that has existed throughout this campaign. I'm not going to start attacking the Labour Party tonight. Inevitably, I suppose there will be talk of Mr Foote perhaps resigning in due course. Would you think that is likely, and if so, who would you be supporting? I have no idea what Mr Foote intends to do, and as I have no idea who is after the leadership, I really can't say who I would support, can I? Janessa, thank you. Now back to the studio. Thank you. One or two results which you saw going through, just comment briefly. In Amber Valley, Philip Oppenheim has captured the seat for the Conservatives. He's son of Sally, so that's a mother and son in the House of Commons. The Tories have taken both the Berry seats. Frank White, who was the person who stopped Mrs Thatcher's sweep in Lancashire last time, has gone this time. In Newcastle upon Tyne East, it does appear that Mike Thomas is out running third there, Labour regaining that seat as they also appear to be regaining Bill Rogers' one in Stockton North. Uh, Mr Heseltine, you are making gains now, but uh, would you not say that the swing has been slowed down? Well, I've only got the sort of forecast that you're putting forward, and they seem pretty substantial to me. We're winning seats all over the country. The South, is, uh, Joan Lester has gone to Slough, Swindon is a good gain, and then you've got the North, Keithley, Darlington, uh, the two Berry seats you've just mentioned. So there's a pretty comprehensive picture, but uh, I think the one thing that's quite obvious from the results we're getting is an immense variation in the pattern. And uh, I think we're really going to have to wait now until later in the evening to see how every seat is going to fall out. Mr Neil Kinnock has joined us. Mr Kinnock, what responsibility do you take for this result? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Are you? Well, you've been campaigning. Um, you have also been in the forefront of the publicity about the campaign, Mr Kinnock. Do you feel sorry about Labour's campaign? Could it have been more forceful, better directed? I think against the kind of impediment we had from the press and the mobilised sentiment of the last 12 months, and the roots of defeat which were put down by some of the elements in our party in the two or three years of after 1980 made our victory uh, a difficult one to achieve in any case and uh, they are the added together uh, reasons for us being in this situation now and when it results in the loss of people like David Stoddart in Swindon Frank White and most of all, Joan Lester. In Joan's case, I frankly would admit to being heartbroken. Spen Halligan, would you say that was an accurate assessment of why Labour lost? No, I think Labour lost really because the manifesto they presented 
allowed the Conservatives to largely rubbish their alternatives and managed to make them not really discuss what they put for the future. And um, it is an ironic election that that should actually happen. Certainly unique in my experience that the government manages to, <laughs> to not to have to defend its own record because the main opposition case is so outrageous. What seems quite remarkable to me is that um, I don't think there's any doubt the Conservatives are in for a big win anyway. They're going to do that on a smaller percentage of the poll than they got last time which um, makes you ask a few questions. It does appear that the Alliance, the main figures, are going to get re-elected, and it appears we've got 25-ish percent of the poll. So we have a new force in British politics, and just what will happen over the next two years, I suspect as much as anything else in the short term, really depends on how the Labour Party itself reacts. Will it in fact react by saying, um, will the grassroots say that the real reason they didn't succeed was that their leaders let them I down and they didn't argue the manifesto? I have to interrupt you because I believe one of your colleagues, Mr. Jenkins, his result is coming in Hillhead now. Richard Todd, 15,900. <laughs> and that the undermentioned person has been duly elected to serve as member for the said constituency, Piers Rolf Garfield Merchant. <laughs> And so it's a conservative game there for Newcastle Central. Well, it wasn't Hillhead, it was, of course, Newcastle Central, a very different Newcastle Central from the old one, largely uh, a conservative seat. Now Hillhead. They're counting so many of the Glasgow results in one hall, in the Kelvin Hall, which has seen plenty of fisticuffs and pugilism in the past. I think now down at Plymouth, Devonport, we actually have Dr. David Owen. Let's go there and see Carol Barnes. Yes, Alistair, Dr. Owen is with me now. Dr. Owen, a huge majority. Was, this, was it a surprise for you? Well, it's been a very good campaign in the last week, 10 days. I think we started off probably not winning, but it has been a tremendous success. And I'm uh, obviously delighted. It's a young party, the Social Democrats, but we've shown that we can win seats. We've shown that we can uh, organize very effectively. And I think it's a great result. And I'm very pleased with all the help we've had from our liberal partners. But uh, yes, great. Do do you think that some people might have voted for the SDP tactically, as you yourself have suggested, in order to deprive the Conservatives of a landslide? Well, maybe. I don't know. We'll, until you can see the results from the country as a whole, I don't know. All I do know is this is, a, by any standards, a pretty sensational victory, and we're absolutely thrilled with it here. And I hope it will give heart to the Social Democrats in the country and Liberals. But particularly, since it does appear, I hope it's not going to be the true, but we're not going to get of course, anywhere near the number of seats that we should get from our position. So now a major political force in the country. Uh, I hope it will be anyhow a source of great comfort for them. And I would just say to those others who've, not, who've done very well with a lot of seconds and a very powerful position that it will make them go back, work hard, and come the next election, I believe you'll see Social Democrat and Liberal MPs in a major commanding position. Dr. Owen, we must leave you now and go straight to Crosby. Well, here at Crosby, the result is just a few seconds away now. The mayor has the results in her hand, I believe. We don't know the exact figures yet, but we do hear uh, that Mrs. Shirley Williams has failed to hold the seat. But that has yet to be confirmed, of course. One thing we can tell you, it's been very, very close, people are saying. And we're just waiting for the mayor to... I, Jenny Goodwin Kemp, being the returning officer for the Crosby constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Peter Michael Hussey... Ecology Party. 415. Malcolm Thornton... Conservative. 30,604. Robert David Waring, 6,611. 
Right Honourable Shirley Vivian Teresa Britain Williams, 27,200. Mrs. Williams has lost the seat. She's lost Crosby, I the seat she won so dramatically has been in the by election. Elected to serve as member of Parliament Mr. Thornton, the strong the man brought in by the Tories, has done it. Good fight at 27,203, but the Tories topped the poll, 30,604. So one less for the gang of four. Mrs Williams must be bitterly disappointed because she's fought so hard and really thought she'd won. Mr Mayor, acting retainers. Party candidate, 9,678. <laughs> Alistair Whitelaw, Scottish Ecology Party, 239. So that's it. So that is it. Roy Jenkins has got in, has held his seat with a majority of just over 200. Majority of just over 1,200. Jenkins, 14,856. Carmichael Labour, 13,672. lively atmosphere in this hall which uh, is not allowing Mr Jenkins at the moment to make his speech of victory. Much of, uh, much of the liveliness down here is being caused in fact by the Mr. Scottish Eckley Nationalists.
Well, here at Stockton North, the Mayor Alan Pragnall, the Labour Mayor here, is about to make the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the result for Stockton North constituency. I, being the return officer of the Stockton North constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Cook, Francis, Labour. 1,839 8, 1, votes. 15,339. Frank Cook Labour. 18,339 votes. Davies, Harry Lonsdale. Conservative. 16,469. Just to confirm that figure, 18,339. Rogers, the Right Honourable William Thomas. SDP Alliance. 14,630. So, Mr Rogers has lost the seat. He is in third place behind Labour and Conservatives. Labour have regained this seat. Uh, after two years in the SDP camp, they've got it back and have continued the run since Harold Macmillan uh, left here in 1945. Has been duly elected to serve as a member for the said constituency. So unlike uh, David Owen in Plymouth, here Bill Rogers' personal vote has not held up. The Labour vote is tougher in the north and more traditional and Bill Rogers has lost. Still, Nick, these are very remarkable figures that the beaten SDP people are getting. People who change from one party to another may survive, but by and large in the past, when people have fought as independents, apart from S.O. Davis down in the valleys back in 1970, they have not been getting results like this. And although Mr. Horham, Mr. Rogers, perhaps, so oh yes, Mr. Mike Thomas in Newcastle East are not getting the results that Mr. Jenkins and uh, uh, Dr. Owen have got, we're going now to Liverpool for a result. David Alton. Liberal. 18,845. For Mark Andrew Erickson Rohrer, National, National Front, 212. For Brian Mervyn Keith, Conservative, 14,650. For Mr. Andrew Charles Snowden, 12,352. So and that David, is Alton David Alton is elected back as, as Liberal MP for Mossley Hill. Hill. <laughs> And David Alton will now continue as a Liverpool MP. Mr. Returning and Officer, officer ladies and gentlemen, Tory swing. First of all, may I thank the staff here tonight. And we're going for the straight to Cardiff job now. they've done in counting the votes which have been. I, the undersigned, being the Deputy Acting Returning Officer for the Cardiff South and Penarth constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows mm. Leonard James Callaghan. Labour. 17,448. Sean Unharad Edwards. Pride Cymru. 673. Benjamin Thomas Lewis. Freedom from world domination. 165. Winston Roddick. 8,816. Liberal. David Arthur Stephen Tredinick. Conservative. 15,000. 172. I therefore declare so that it's a majority Leonard of James about two and a half thousand for Mr. Cowan. <laughs> a comfortable majority in view of the change boundary. I gather that he himself forecast three thousand and had a fiver on it. Smiling, despite the reduced majority, reduced from eight thousand seven hundred to just over two and a half. Mr. Returning Officer, I'm sure that at least I can say this on behalf of the all the candidates, that we all thank you very much indeed for the work that you've done in, in this election campaign. I think we also all appreciate the work of the presiding officers in the booths. 
I know that you had at one stage great difficulty even at two o'clock this morning in trying to find one presiding officer and I congratulate you on your ingenuity in doing so. Thank also the <coughs> those who have counted. Uh, ten past one is pretty early by our standards here in Cardiff South and uh, they must have shown a great deal of, of celerity and nimbleness in their fingers. Thank also the police and all those, the caretakers and the schools who rigged them up, all those who have indeed taken part. Um, I would like to say to my opponents, uh, thank you for a clean campaign. We have come across each other very little, I think, perhaps because we've all been concentrating on different areas, but at least um, uh, as far as I know, and certainly this is in line with the kind of campaign that we always fight in this constituency. I'm well, Jim Callaghan is back. He's the only man to have been Prime Minister, Home Secretary, Foreign Secretary and Chancellor of the Exchequer and now, when he goes back, Father of the House. Uh, while he was talking there, we've had a number of results. Montgomery has gone back to the Liberals. That had been the Emlyn Hooson seat. has gone back to Alex Carlyle, bigwig in the Liberal Party in Wales. Recounts are asked for by Labour in Sherwood in the East Midlands and in Bradford South. What is also interesting in what is happening tonight is that the Conservatives have taken two new towns near London, north and east of London, Basildon and Harlow, and these are seats with a very high proportion of new town owned property. They've also taken Cowley, which is the motor workers again, and Ettrick Bridge, David Steele, I can see now there, and Alistair Stewart is with him. It's a bit nippy and it's raining up here, but nevertheless, you're still smiling. You've got two gains so far, but two of your partners from the Gang of Four are gone. How do you assess the evening so far? Well, of course, I'm very sad that Shirley and Bill have both lost, but they knew they were up against a tough fight. And uh, all through the campaign, I was being fed questions about what happens if all the four of Gang Four are wiped out. The fact is that Roy Jenkins and David Owen have had tremendous victories in their own seats. And therefore, whatever happens later on tonight, we've got a massive vote throughout the country and we've got enough of the leadership back to register that this is going to be a major political force. We've been picking out and Peter Sissons has been talking about it through the program these big swings that you're getting but still not picking up the seats. Well we've picked up two so far uh, Montgomery and Yeovil and I've just heard David Alton is home safely in the bigger seat in Liverpool, which was a tricky one. So I'm really quite cheerful, but naturally we are going to be very disappointed that the sheer volume of our vote is not going to be translated into a volume of seats. Nevertheless, it's obvious there's going to be a very, very good force in the next house, and uh, we're going to be there and fighting. A lot of the party leaders tonight have been a bit long-faced and serious. What's the atmosphere like in there? It's very good in there. I can't get any peace. There are so many people in the house, but uh, I better go back in. I'm told that Rory came running through and said, who's winning? And you told him to ask his mother. <laughs> He's actually lying asleep on the couch. <laughs> David Steele, thanks for coming thanks out for in the range. Right, thank you. So it is raining in the borders. Let's see how the Liberal chances are going on down in the Isle of Wight with Anne Lucas. And we're just going through the very last tense moments of the count here. The candidates are all lined up waiting. A few last-minute scribbles from the High Sheriff of the Isle of Wight, Major General Oliver Room, before he announces the final figures to us. Memories here, of course, of the last election's virtual photo finish. Just 352 votes between the Liberal and the Conservatives. Liberal Mr. Stephen Ross standing there beside, just having a sneaky look at the figures himself. And now we have the results from the Isle of Wight. The recount in Bradford South, we are told the distance between the Labour and Conservative reported to be just 37 votes. Recount is going on. We'll go back to the Isle of Wight just at the moment we hear. Conservatives have held Birmingham Yardley. Well, that was a marginal, but of course every local opinion poll had said that they would hold it. Just to note for general interest that Mrs Anne Winterton has held Congleton for the Conservatives, so she will be joining her husband in the House of Commons. Now, Martin.
Well, three results first where Labour has uh, bashed SDP defectors. First of all in Worsley, Terence Lewis is in, pushing John Roper, who uh, defected to the SDP from Labour, down to third place. The Labour majority there, 4,000. And moving on from Worsley, uh, we're going straight to the Isle of Wight to see how Stephen Ross is getting on. I, Oliver McRae Room, being the returning officer for the Isle of Wight constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows, viz. Virginia Hilda Brunette Maxwell Bottomley. Conservative. 34,904. Thomas Brian Joseph McDermott. Independent. 208. Stephen Sherlock Ross. Liberal. 38,407. 30, 38,407. Catherine Wilson. Labour. 1,828. And that's... Stephen Ross there, holding the seat with a much that improved Stephen majority. Sherlock Ross has been duly elected to serve as member for the said constituency. So... <laughs> Stephen Ross there, obviously Hi, delighted. Mr Deputy Turning Officer, you might have seen there on the screen as well, Eric Heffer back at Liverpool Walton. What happened at, at, at the Isle of Wight, we can now see. The share of the poll, Liberals took 51% uh, in a Liberal marginal, uh, the Conservative 46%, Labour 2%, their vote now squeezed to virtually nothing in the Isle of Wight. The change on the general election of 1979, the Liberal up 2.8, Conservative down 1.4, Labour down 1.6, the Independent up 0.3. And let's have a look briefly at what our forecast is telling us now, with uh, more than 200 results in. We're forecasting in the next House of Commons there'll be 390 Conservative MPs, 213 Labour MPs, 25 Alliance MPs, of which 20 will be Liberal and 5 will be SDP, and 22 others, of which 17 will be from Northern Ireland, which declares tomorrow. If we put in the winning post, add up the combined opposition, there's the Conservative majority, which we're projecting, of 130 seats in the new parliament. Alistair. Yes, Peter. Although we are reporting how well the Alliance have been doing, especially in the south of England, and that Isle of Wight result is a remarkable one for Stephen Ross, the Conservatives have been nibbling away at everybody. They're not losing seats themselves. They've held Aberdeen South. Now, that was one that uh, Mr Ian Sproke, the aviation minister, actually left to go and fight down in the borders. Jerry Malone has held that. He failed to hold Hill Head in the by-election, the victor at the by-election and now the general election. Mr Roy Jenkins is there. Mr Jenkins, um, it was a close-run thing. Uh, it was fairly close run, but given the fact we had to take in an additional 40%, it wasn't favourable territory for us in the constituency. I think it was a remarkably good result. Do you think that you took votes from both the Tories and Labour? Yes. It seems at the moment that you're getting consistent swings throughout the country, the alliances, but you're not really picking up the seats at the moment. Well, that, of course, is a criticism of the really ridiculous and unfair electoral system under which we live. But nonetheless, I believe that we have made a breakthrough which British politics has not seen for 60 years. But, but can you really call 25, 26% to breakthrough when you still haven't reached the, the Labour Party totals? Well, we don't yet know what the total is at the end of the day, but what is absolutely clear that there's we are extremely close to the Labour Party total. And uh, the Labour Party total is certainly lower than it's been for 50 years. And this is a very remarkable achievement for an alliance which has been in existence for 18 months and a Social Democratic Party in existence for only two years. It doesn't look at the moment, though, as though you're, you're even going to be able to hold the balance of power. Does it must be very disappointing? Uh, no, with this great um, uh, likely Conservative majority, that does not look uh, at all likely. But what is the fact is that we have, um, we have made an impact on British politics, which means it will never be quite the same again. 
and I've no doubt at all that this achievement of ours, we'll see exactly what figures it turns out with, well over a quarter of the electorate, maybe up to nearly 30% of the electorate, does show that a large part of people want something new in politics and are being imprisoned by the electoral system in an old pattern which is increasingly out of date and unacceptable. One of the patterns it seems that we're seeing so far this evening is that the Liberals are doing quite well and that the SDP isn't doing terribly well. The predictions are that the SDP may end up with no more than perhaps four or five seats. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the day, but uh, looking at the results earlier on, it seemed to me we did um, well in Guildford. The Liberals, happily, did well in Cheltenham, just about the same sort of result. Uh, David Owen had a very good, remarkable result in Devonport. We won here in very difficult circumstances. I don't think it's possible to make any such judgments at the moment. Mr Jenkins, thank you very much. Back to London. Uh, just again, keeping up the happy families, Claire Shorts has held Birmingham Ladywood for Labour. Her husband is Alex Lyon, who's fighting in York. Haven't heard from him yet. The Conservatives have taken the Speaker's old seat in Cardiff West. And we should say that a young politician called Edward Heath has been returned in Old Bexley and Sidcombe. Well, now we have, I think, Mrs Shirley Williams at Crosby. She just narrowly failed to hold that seat. Well, I don't think we do have Mrs Shirley Williams. We'll try and show you now what happened after Mrs. Williams heard that she had lost a seat, second general election that she's lost a seat in. Now, here is her reaction. Oh, I'm not disappointed. I'm, I'm actually rather pleased in a way. I think that we had a remarkable result uh, to move a natural conservative vote, which started at 19,000, which was made worse by boundary changes, and then to bring it down to 3,000, while obviously I would like to have won, is by any standards, I think, an absolutely sensational result. What's your future now? <laughs> Goodness, that's what they asked me some time ago. I think my future is as president of the SDP to make sure that this force is unstoppable. And that, together with David, I don't yet know about uh, Bill and Roy, whether they've been returned or not, I intend to do. I believe that the alliance is now unstoppable. I think we will win one by-election after another as this Conservative government's uh, chickens come home to roost. I haven't any fears at all. The have future is with us. Have you spoken to David Owen or Roy Jenkins I yet? I haven't had the chance to do so, and I don't yet know Roy Jenkins' results. You may have the advantage. He's won, I'm, ha I'm able to tell you. I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. Well, the, the party's future is in very safe hands with both of them. But the Alliance surely has not done anything like as well as you would have hoped. Of course it hasn't done as well as I would have hoped, but it's done a great deal better than either of the old parties, and if our electoral system was anything except a swindle, uh, the Alliance today would have not a few handfuls of seats, it would have scores of seats. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the Labour Party is, has been rejected by the electorate, but our electoral system does not show that up. Mrs Williams, what about you personally? Will you stand again? Oh, goodness. I don't think I could possibly decide about that at this stage in the game. But I will certainly keep in very close touch with the many friends I made in Crosby. And I will just have to see how things pan out. What's what your you message for the voters is here? Is this the end of your involvement in Crosby? Certainly not. I mean, they, I've made many, many friends here. And I hope that my close personal relations will continue. I have no intention of suddenly letting the grass grow between London and Liverpool never appearing again. Would you fight Crosby? Two Labour left-wingers back, Dave Nellist in Coventry and Terry Fields in Liverpool, but a Labour right of centre victor tonight, Mr James Callaghan. He's there at Cardiff with Emma Daniel. <laughs> mm. Mr Callaghan, you had more cause for concern this time really than you've had for 20 years. Boundary commissioners took a large chunk out of us, you know, or at least they added a large chunk. I, I was betting on two and a half thousand, so I wasn't far out. Why do you, I've won money on it. Why do you think the Labour campaign generally has gone so badly? Oh, that's something we should be discussing over the next few weeks, I dare say. And you'll be taking part in those discussions? If anybody wants to listen to me, yes. Do you think that your contribution to the divisions on defence policy have uh, contributed to the disarray no, in the Labour Party? No, I think it's the decision on the defence. Well, I, I think those who are here have given you the answer. Now that you're back in Parliament after 38 years, can we conceivably see you back as leader of the Labour Party? Certainly not. Certainly no not. prospect no, at all? No, no. The younger generation must take that on, of course. Do you feel that uh, you have returned the loyalty to Michael Foote that he gave to you when Certainly. he was a minister? Certainly. Of course, yes, indeed. I wanted him to win and hoped he would win. And who would you think will be the next leader of the Labour Party? Michael Foote is the leader of the Labour Party. Uh, that's the answer. Until he decides to do anything else, that's the only leader we've got. Mr. Callan, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> well, Jim Callahan had a very close run in 1959. The Tory candidate then was somebody called E.R. Dexter, who went on to do something in cricket. This has been his closest shave since then. A couple of North Country well-known names back, Cyril Smith in Rochdale. There has been a swing to him there from Labour of 3.4%, and Joe Ashton in Bassett Law. Though there was a swing against Joe Ashton of 5.4% to the Conservative. Andrew Foles, the best actor in the House of Commons, <coughs> is back in Warley East. And of course, listening to the shouting around Mr. Roy Jenkins at the Glasgow Hill head count, that's nothing to what he has to put up with in the House of Commons. However, the Conservatives have only lost Montgomery so far on my calculation of what they won last time. They've held on to Anis Mon, Anglesey, and one of the things that you have got to notice in this general election so far has been the very poor showing of Plaid Cymru, the Welsh nationalist, really reduced in so many ways to a very minority party. And just to say that in Erith and Crayford, David Evanet has beaten James Wellbeloved of the SDP. Now Martin has got some results. Let's look at some of the detailed results that have been coming in. First of all, in Bradford West, Max Madden, who was MP for Sowerby until 1979, he's, uh, he's home there, ousting uh, Eddie Lyons, who defected from Labour to the SDP. The Labour majority, just over 3,000. And in Liverpool Broad Green, uh, Richard Crawshaw, who defected from Labour to the SDP, he is uh, pushed down to fourth place there and lost his deposit. Labour have taken Liverpool Broad Green with a majority of just under 4,000. And in Newcastle East, uh, Mike Thomas, another Labour defector to the SDP, he is out, down into third place, the Labour majority there, 7,400. And now let's look at seats that the Conservatives have been taking in the course of the evening. Um, we see that uh, in uh, Amber Valley, Philip Oppenheim, son of Sally Oppenheim, the consu uh, former consumer minister, uh, he is home there. His majority, 3,300 in what should have been a safe Labour seat, and the swing to the Conservatives of 9.1%. We're going straight now to Birmingham Northfield for a declaration. And the, here's, here's the Birmingham Northfield result about to be declared. This was the seat that John Speller just won for Labour in a very tight by-election uh, last October. He's been there for eight months and he's on a knife edge. The Conservative candidate, Roger King, did, who's a distributor for car care products, Thank you. looks confident. And here's I the hereby give Lord notice Mayor. that the total number of votes given for each candidate is as follows. King, Roger Douglas, the Conservative Party candidate, 22,596. Shepherd Peter Raymond, Communist Party, 420. Speller John Francis, the Labour Party candidate, 19,836. Webb David, Liberal Alliance, 10,045. A majority of 2,760 for King Roger Douglas. So the Conservatives have got Birmingham Northfield back, the seat that Jocelyn Cadbury just won Birmingham in the Northfield 1979 general election. As John Speller out after only eight months in Parliament. Now this was on paper the most marginal seat in Britain. And here's what happened. The share of the vote, the Conservatives took 43%, Labour 37%, the Liberal 19% and the Communists 1%. The change in the share since 1979's general election, the Conservative down 3.1%, Labour down 8.1%, the Liberal up 10.4%. So it looks at first glance as if the SDP intervention cost Labour any chance, the, Liber the, the Alliance intervention cost Labour any chance of Birmingham Northfield. There's some very interesting swing figures, which perhaps I've got time to show you. The national swing, Labour is being squeezed by a 3.5% swing to the Conservatives. And if we look at what's happening um, between Labour and the Alliance, while well, that battle is going on, the Alliance is squeezing Labour with a 10.8% swing to the Alliance. But I'll come back to the swings later. Dennis Healy is with Norman Rees in Leeds.
Mr. Healy, first of all, congratulations on your own result. Uh, Mr. Hattersley has said that tomorrow will be the beginning of Labour's campaign to win power in 1988. The bookmakers are making him favourite to be the next leader of the Labour Party. What do you say to that? I'm delighted to hear that they're speculating on a, a situation which doesn't exist. What do you expect to happen, though, in the aftermath of this result? I have no idea, but uh, if you're talking about the leadership, Mr. Cook will make his own decision, and uh, I shall support him, whatever it is. Mr. Roy Jenkins, of course, has forecast that there will be a Labour bloodbath in the aftermath of a defeat in this uh, campaign. I think he must be immensely embarrassed by the fact that yesterday Mr. Steele said that if the Liberals won substantially more seats than the Social Democrats, the alliance would be at an end. So I'm afraid Mr. Jenkins will be out of a job, and no doubt he's trying to disguise his consciousness of impending doom by talking about something else, well, not ask, for the first time. Can I ask you this question? Are you interested in the leadership, Mr. Healy? I'm not interested in a job that doesn't exist. Are you saying then that as far as you're concerned, Mr. Foote will remain leader of the Labour Party in the, despite the result tonight? As long as he determines to do so. What's your overall view now, given the, the fact that uh, it does look as if uh, you've been comprehensively beaten by the Conservative Party? Uh, where do you think you went wrong? I'm not going to discuss the, uh, the hypothesis, which again is not yet verified. What struck me very much, uh, because you interviewed me right at the beginning, before the votes began to be counted, is that the computer is already giving quite different uh, prognostications of what may happen at the end of the day from those it gave at the beginning. And I'd much rather see what happens at the end before I comment. Thank you, Mr. Healy, very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Rees. Right, and uh, let's look at uh, some more results that Mr. Healy will certainly be disappointed about. Their seats that have been gained by the Conservatives. And first of all, in Basildon, the uh, Liberal, uh, the Labour, um, uh, the Labour Julian Fulbrook uh, hasn't made it there. Uh, the Conservative, he's the barrister who advised Labour on the Boundary Commission changes, and the Conservatives have taken that with a majority of 1,300 and a swing their way of 10.3%. In Bradford North, Pat Wall, the militant uh, Labour candidate, he didn't make it there. Geoffrey Lawler is home for the Conservatives with a majority of 1,600, and uh, the turnout was 71%. In Cannock and Burnt Wood, Gwilym Roberts is no longer an MP. Uh, the Conservatives have taken that with a majority of 2,000 and a swing their way of 7.5%. And in Cardiff West, uh, that's the, 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 the speaker, George Thomas's old seat. Stefan Terleski, who was born in the Ukraine and was actually made a slave by the Russians, or so he says. Uh, he is home there for the Conservatives in Cardiff West with a majority of 1,700 and a swing his way of 8.6%. In Darlington, which Labour took at the by-election, well, the Conservatives have had their revenge for that. Uh, they are home in Darlington with a majority of 3,500 and a swing their way of 4.5%. In Erith and Crayford, James Wellbeloved, the Labour MP who defected to the SDP, he's out, and the uh, Conservatives have taken that with a majority of 920. In Harlow, Stan Newans is out, the Labour left-winger. Uh, the Conservatives have taken that with a majority of 3,500, swing their way of 4.7%. In Hayes and Harlington, uh, Noel Sanderson, the Labour MP who defected to the SDP, he's pushed down into third place, the Conservative majority just over 4,000. And in Kingswood, uh, Robert Hayward, who uh, lost his deposit fighting Carmarthen in 1974, well, that's quite a change for him, victor in Kingswood, with a majority of 1,700 and a swing his way of 5%. And in Norfolk Northwest. Uh, Henry Bellingham is safely home there. Christopher Brocklebank Fowler, the only Conservative MP who defected to the SDP, pushed into second place. And uh, last result here for the moment, his majority, 3,000. Alistair. Uh, Martin, the result that I think is most important there is the result in King's Wood, which is just to the east of Mr. Ben's constituency in Bristol East. And, of course, there have been plenty of rumours running around tonight, but the rumour from Bristol East is that Mr. Ben is, in fact, out. We think the result there is due in about 10 minutes' time. It's only a rumour. There's a lot of recounts and so on going on around the country. While we wait for Mr. Ben, simply to say there's a recount in Edinburgh Central. Apparently, Labour and Conservative have roughly equal votes. That's one that the Conservatives had expected to take been very considerably redistricted, and Mr. Alex Fletcher, a junior minister of the Scottish office, had thought he might take that. Now, he said something about uh, Mr. Ben. We also think now, in the light of the results through the South and local word from the spot, that Mr. Norman St. John Stevens may be losing in Chelmsford to Mr. Stuart Mole. Of course, it was a very bad local election result for the Conservatives there about a month ago. And in Bolton Northeast, it appears that Anne Taylor 
could be on the way out there in that marginal seat. Now, John Snow in Liverpool is talking to the victorious David Alton. Well, David Alton, this uh, was uh, computed as a uh, conservative marginal, which you seem to have made into a very safe liberal seat. Well, it was an ITN computer. I, I'm glad to say you got it wrong. <laughs> oh, there were others. <laughs> well, it was the ITN computer that was used against us throughout the campaign by the Conservative Party, who regularly said this would be a safe conservative seat but it clearly was never on the cards and in municipal elections this year we won four of the five wards winning 14,000 votes twice as many as the other two parties almost put together and I think what that demonstrates is that where liberals work hard at community level building up the foundations in a firm way then they can expect to reap the results by winning parliamentary seats as well. We don't know the result of Liverpool Broad Green next door yet, but all the signs are that the militant uh, candidate has won there. Uh, and in any case, there was a split Liberal vote. It seems that you are the only Liberal to have got in in Liverpool, and yet there was a Liverpool Liberal groundswell at one time. Is that not burning out? I was the only Liberal to get in last time as well, which was in the old Edge Hill constituency. This time, we took on 40,000 new voters, lost a third of that constituency, enormous boundary changes. That was an enormous challenge. Now, I don't know the other results from the other seats in Liverpool yet. I hope that people will have had the sense to reject the militant tendency. People who are on the extreme left of the Labour Party, Michael Foote himself once called them an open conspiracy. Let's come back to the Liberal Party for a moment, because you, in fact, are in conflict with central office of the Liberal Party, or Liberal Party headquarters, in that you supported the runaway Liberal candidate next door here, instead of the Alliance, uh, Mr Crawshaw. What's going to happen? Are you, now that it looks as if there's going to be a very small SDP representation in Parliament, are you now in favour of a smashing up of the alliance? We must go, in fact, straight to Peckham, which we shall never know that. Well, here at Peckham, the declaration is imminent. Southwark's mayor, Councillor Sam King, is talking to the candidates. And we understand that he's likely to make his announcement any moment. We believe there may have been uh, some question about who was going to be second. Uh, the results for second place seem to be very close. And Right, and let's uh, knock off a few results while we're waiting for that. Um, in Oxford East, the Conservatives have taken Oxford East Stephen Norris is safely home there. That's incidentally is BL country that saw the washing up strike and the Conservative majority there 1,200 and a swing to the Conservatives of 1.6%. In Southampton, Itchen, Bob Mitchell who defected from Labour to the SDP, he's pushed down into second place by Chris Chope who cut rates when he was leader of Wandsworth Council and the Conservative majority there 5,200. We're going straight to uh, David Steele who is arriving at the count at Selkirk. Very well, Mrs. Line, Williams and Mr. Rogers around. How do you feel about that? Well, naturally, I'm very sad for both uh, Shirley and Bill. I have worked uh, with them very well over the last two years, got to know them very well, and it's very sad. But I think what is important is that both Roy Jenkins and David Owen are back, and therefore, whatever the number of seats as we have, there is a strong political movement backed by a massive vote in the country. Over a quarter of the people have voted for us, and we have got the strength there in the House of Commons to build on that. But you've lost your first liberal there, Mr. Are you going to, are you going to get the bill pitch? Are you going to get the seats, Mr. Steele? Are you going to get the seats? Mr. Cole first, right. Uh, isn't it uh, going to be likely, Mr. Steele, that uh, in the House of Commons it's going to be the Liberal Party and the Gang of Two? No, no, it's much too early to say that. I think we're going to do much better because than that. The, the the are you going to get the seats, Mr. Steele? Can I just ask you what your reaction is to Bill Pitt losing his seat? That's the first Liberal I, casualty. It is the first, and I think it'll be the only Liberal casualty. I'm very sad about it, but like Shirley Williams at Crosby, it's very difficult to hold these seats which are natural Tory, Tory territory, which we win at by-elections, and they 